Hey everybody, in this video I'm going to show you what it takes to build a rallying bike, specifically out of this KTM 450 EXCF 2020, and you can really do this with any enduro bike. A rally bike is really just an extreme adventure touring bike, so this is good for any extreme adventurers out there, or if you want to race your bike through the desert. The best thing about this is you don't have to be an engineer, all you have to have is a little bit of time, patience, and follow the instructions. So let's talk a little bit about why we start with an enduro bike and not a motocross bike or something like a, a 690 enduro from KTM or a, a bigger bike. So obviously you want to start with the lightest bike possible. And if we want to start with light, we're going to start with a racing bike. So that automatically cancels out anything from BMW, any of the bigger adventure bikes from KTM. You have to start with a racing bike. And from that point, we really have only two options, motocross or enduro. With a motocross bike, you don't have lights, uh, you have a silencer that's not road legal. Basically, you get a road legal bike when you buy an enduro bike. Um, you know, you need to have a road legal bike to uh, go to a rally because you're gonna be on public roads. So from the beginning, you're gonna have most of the things that you need actually to enter a rally and, and race. Uh, the main things that you're really putting on the bike is uh, navigation and fuel. Uh, so the bikes uh, from KTM, other manufacturers that build enduro bikes, they come with maybe nine liters of fuel and that's enough for any enduro race probably or a couple laps at least. Uh, and they do a lot of refueling, but for a rally, you need a lot more fuel. There are only a couple other things you need besides those two main things. Uh, that are required by FIM if you're going to race in any FIM race, if you're going to register in uh, an actual championship uh, or if you're going to race basically in one of the FIM categories. Uh, there are some rules that you have to follow that are not going to help you actually ride better or ride faster, but you're going to have to have water on board the bike. So you need at least three liters of water on board the bike. That's basically always done at the bottom of the bike in the bash plate. Uh, at the lowest point so you keep the center of gravity down and the other thing is uh, you're gonna have to have a first aid kit and a survival kit so that doesn't take it more than about this much space and people put those in various places but uh, I put mine in the, in the uh, tail bag here this is the Endurastan rally pack and this is fixed to the bike don't go with any of the uh, the tail bags with the straps that fixed down here and it just kind of dangles around. I had that, it broke. Uh, I, I did a couple jumps on the motocross track and the the buckles just, the plastic buckles just broke off. So you really need something that is fixed to the bike. This is fixed with screws. Um, there's other bikes maybe that have spaces under the seat for tools or in the bash plate. Um, some people tie the uh, zip tie the first aid kits to the nav tower or maybe on the forks but I didn't like that option because it's exposed to the elements so it's not waterproof this is waterproof so this is really excellent because it's none of your bandages or your you know survival stuff is going to get wet so how do you get this stuff well the tank bag is pretty easy I mean enduro stand is it's uh it's a it's a new company it's not not that new but they definitely make some good stuff and that's available on a lot of places. Uh, Linden Posket Racing, uh, as you can see my sticker over there. They, they use that obviously and, and this is just an excellent piece of equipment. So you can get that anywhere. The bash plate is a bit trickier because you're going to see a lot of the parts on the bike, especially the front end of the navigation. I mean, it's, it's specialty equipment, okay? We're talking about, you know, several hundred riders in rallies every year that use this stuff um, so it's not like this is coming off the factory you know assembly line or, or anything and a lot of these things are just uh, garages and shops that just make hand make this stuff so that means that they're a little bit more expensive it also means that they're hard to find um, luckily I'm gonna post all the links all the uh, all the uh, shops that I've got this from this is rebelxsports.com uh, Manuel is great. He is one of the biggest helps that I've had. 
on building this bike. Really what's gonna happen is, once you build this bike, if you're gonna race it, you're gonna have to pass, you're gonna have to go to the race, you're gonna have to pass scrutineering at the race. There's nobody who's gonna come here and say, okay, this bike is, you know, ready to go, we're gonna, we're gonna let you race. If you get there and you're missing, you know, an important piece, you know, you know, water or uh, first aid kit, maybe you can find one there, but something as important as the water, you know, you might, you might not be able to be allowed to race unless maybe, I don't know, you strap it somewhere. So, um, so find a, find a shop that really knows what they're doing that can help you out and give you the advice and give you the parts that you need. Uh, rebelexports.com is definitely one of them. Let's talk about fuel for a minute. Basically, the rallies, they're gonna have a fuel autonomy requirement. So for races like the crazy ones like Dakar, you know, um, we're actually not even, we don't actually have enough fuel for Dakar here because we've got 15 liters in the front and five liters, which I don't have on the bike right now. That's only 20 liters. You need at least 30 liters for Dakar. So that's, a, that's an entire subframe replacement with another, you know, basically the bike is a rolling fuel tank. I mean, that's, that's beyond the scope of this build. Uh, for a lot of other stuff, Morocco um, Desert Challenge Rally du Maroc, you could probably get away with uh, 20 liters. Uh, my, my plan was to do Rally du Maroc with 20 liters, and so that makes 15 and five in the back. And um, actually for the regional rallies like Hellas Rally in Europe, um, 15 liters is actually even up for that because I believe they require maybe 200 kilometers of fuel autonomy, uh, whereas Rally du Maroc is 250 plus. And again, they have refueling, so maybe even 20 liters is a lot, but, but it definitely is better to have more fuel on the bike. So let's talk about the front fuel tank here. This is also from Rebel X Sports now. I'm pretty sure this is in a Chiribis tank. All the aftermarket tanks are pro probably pretty much all uh, a Chiribis. And this is the biggest one you can get for the front. They, the stock is nine liters. This one is 15. They have a 12 liter tank. I don't, I don't see the point in getting that. I mean, even if you don't want to race in a rally, you know, you could just fill this up with the 12 liters instead of 15 liters. Um, this is just, bolt-in replacement you don't have there's nothing extra about this i mean the breather hose is the same you know you you do use the stock fuel pump so what you're going to do is you're going to take out the fuel pump and it just there's two bolts here that you once you disconnect the fuel line you're going to just disconnect uh, unscrew these two bolts um you're going to pull the fuel pump out i believe through the top Although I don't remember how I did that, but anyway, the fuel pump comes out. It's 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 a cinch. You take it out of the old tank, the original tank, put in the new one. You bolt it in with one screw. I think we all know how to do that. And that's it. You got 15 liters of fuel. Now, the rear tank I have down here. This really just you take off this plastic Tupperware here. Um, you leave the fuel. Uh, you leave the air filter cover in place. But you take this guy off. And this just really sets into place right there. It's, it fits very nicely with the bike. It doesn't stick out a lot. Um, I, I love it. Um, you can see the brackets here. This unscrews, you just put this around the subframe, uh, subframe um, aluminum uh, bar there. This just screws in to the subframe from below, above the wheel. So really two places holding this in. It's very light, uh, five liters of fuel. Um, you wanna put the breather hose, you wanna route that to the back, like the KTM factory bike. Uh, zip tie that to the uh, license plate. You need a license plate. Uh, you, you need to show that, you need at least a copy of that. So best place to route the breather is to the back. So you don't get any fuel on your chain, on your wheel, that's just messy. It's gonna spray it everywhere. So route that to the back of the bike. Um, and the fuel connection is, is, uh, is, is great because there's no fuel pump here. All it is is just an extension of the front. So what you do here is um, you just take the fuel hose, you route it uh, nice and neatly down here through the air box. There's that, uh, there's that uh, drainage hole on the bottom of the air box. 
and just take it out here and there's a return there's a return uh, valve below this tank and you just unscrew that and it comes with a valve that you replace and plug this in and basically you have um, an extension of the front tank and it's 20 liters all together now the only thing that happens is since this tank is down here this tank's a little bit higher the top of the tank is a bit higher um, when you have this full of fuel and this full of fuel for example um, well what happens is the water wants the, the fuel is basically liquid so you what it wants to do is equalize the levels between these two tanks so what happens is uh, once you set off or even before setting off this fuel level will want to go down to meet to be level with this fuel level and what's going to happen is it's going to go out of the breather hose um, maybe that's because that's just such a big tank maybe the 9 liter the 15 the 12 liter doesn't have that issue but um, the only way to solve that really is just to put a fuel valve a shutoff valve onto the fuel line here so that basically when you fill this up full 15 liters um, you shut off the rear tank and basically after 30 40 kilometers once the fuel level gets down here you can turn this on you can turn the fuel valve that's uh, between the front and rear tank connected here and basically get the fuel from here now um, and they're both going to go down probably at the same time so they're both going to empty probably at the same time maybe this one will empty first th this one will empty first i'm pretty sure this one will empty last and uh yeah or else you're just going to have fuel pouring out this the fuel valve you can get from motion pro they make a great fuel valve uh they make a couple versions actually so you can get that from motion pro's website or ebay and uh just make sure you get that fuel valve or else you're gonna have an issue with fuel pouring out here both of these fuel tanks are also rebel exports so I, I don't know this might be custom um or it might be made by i shared this but it's fiberglass i believe and uh, it's good quality again rebelexports.com for all of the fuel situation here this is probably the grand finale the piastri resistance if you will the front end and um this is at the same time cool and also a nightmare just because of the fact that there's so much junk here i mean there's wires there's buttons uh there's navigation i mean the cables in themselves just for the minimum of what you need they take up so much space and this is again it's a very small bike and it's very difficult to get all this stuff routed well so that you can number one turn the wheel freely and uh, number two just fit everything in so this is really the the part you have to spend the you have to take your time on this part because um, the wires they could they could fray they're not metal obviously you have to take you have to make sure those are all in a good a good place they're not um, they're not going to rub against any metal or sharp edges and uh, let me zoom in here and show you some of the things that we have to do here well let's start with what we call the nav tower here this is something you'll need to really get all this hardware on the bike uh, some bikes some racers in the uh, smaller rallies like Hellas actually just are able to mount this roadbook holder and uh, and uh, Ico Tripmaster to the handlebars um, and just leave the bike stock as an enduro bike so just with the mask and none of this stuff none of the fairing or the uh, or the nav tower but if you want to go full on rally you need a nav tower you need some, somewhere to mount all the stuff this is raid garage so uh, sorry Rade Garage. Uh, it's a cool name, actually. It's like Rally Raid, Raid Garage, but uh, the pronunciation is Rade, Czech, uh, Czech Republic. Um, really good stuff because this is carbon fiber. So this is really light. This is fully carbon fiber. You got a cover here that's carbon fiber. You have steel mounting brackets. So if in case you know you crash, you can bend those back into place. Really high quality stuff. It comes with the headlights. Uh, you have the high beam and low beam, um, beautiful fairing, okay, beautiful windscreen. Uh, so what you get with that kit is going to be all this carbon fiber machine uh, hardware here, and headlights, and 
this metal stuff that you can mount this onto. You're not gonna get the actual navigation equipment, but you'll get all this stuff that you need to put on the bike to mount everything. You also get a little bit of a, you get it this little, uh, this bracket here, okay? And this bracket, I mounted my Tripmaster remote, my Speedo Cap remote, and my Roadbook uh, switch. Rade de Garage is really the base of what this rally bike is because um, without Rade Garage's expertise, without their equipment, uh, you know, it would be really hard to get this bike, get this all this equipment on. Uh, they, they, they're also really good with support because I crashed this bike actually uh, in, a, in a hair scramble and I put a hole basically into this windscreen and there's some damage on the fairing that is not that bad. There's just a little, there's a few cracks here, which I've duct taped. They sent me a windscreen within two days. I got it um, because I needed for it for a race. I was going to ship the bike and I got a windscreen and fairings from them stat. So, I mean, fantastic service because they're racers just like us. I mean, the, the, the main, the, the best thing is to work with somebody who's also racing and you know there's few places that make this stuff and don't race so that's the beauty about rally is it's a small community it's a small community and uh you're gonna find people who are really passionate about this stuff one thing you're gonna need when you're doing this is i believe is a, a good set of tools one of those tools is a dremel now this thing is amazing for the price that you have to pay for this 60 you know with the with the full uh with the uh with the kit of attachments that you get here it's a bargain because man i've used this so much just to cut route um sand i mean it does everything it, 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 cutting cutting is like is like drawing with this thing the reason i'm showing you is because again we're talking about specialized parts we're talking about stuff that's made for a specific task by you know not high volume um so not everything you're going to get is going to is going to be always perfect example is the, the 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 fairing the side fairings here um but i had to test it, test them with the 12 liter tank so those will fit no, no problem but with the 15 liter that i got um this actually is cut because stock the fairing comes out here and it's going to hang out on top of this tank and it's going to flap around you're going to have to you know secure it somehow it's not going to work you have, you have to cut it so take your time um, take a chalk marker anything that you can write on this uh, trace out where you're going to cut this tank this fairing around this tank Hacksaw is not going to cut it. Okay, you're going to take a hacksaw. You're going to you're going to put cracks into this beautiful uh, clear plastic. You need a Dremel. Okay, this 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 has an attachment for cutting plastic. You know, take your time and put it on a on a medium speed setting, and just and it, and, and look how beautiful that 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 turns out. I didn't just use it for this. I used it for cutting metal uh, up on the nav tower. Um, use it to make holes bigger. I mean, it, it does a lot. So it's really worth it. If you're gonna, if you're gonna serve this bike yourself, I think this is indispensable. So I've been avoiding this part because this is just, you know, one of the biggest journeys. And that's this navigation equipment, these these remotes, all of this uh, wiring. Um, yeah, it's, it's really a, a, a chore to get this stuff right. But luckily you can see me do it now and um basically not make any of the uh mistakes or get the frustration that i had doing this so let's just start with the nav tower so you're gonna get the but you're gonna get the kit from raid uh Rade garage you're not gonna have the stuff so what do you need as a minimum uh for navigating a rally you're gonna need a roadbook holder that's number one um some some of the rallies i think they're going to electronic roadbooks i don't know what that is if you it, i think rallies are, are pretty much going to stay with paper road books for a while so there's two options there's the MIGTEC this is the MIGTEC road book 
and there's the F2R roadbook holder. Uh, there used to be MD, they don't exist anymore. They went out of business. Uh, their parts are still sold on a lot of websites, but they're the most expensive. Um, spares, okay, they still have them, but I'm pretty sure they're not made anymore. So you don't wanna buy something that's out of production. You're gonna have an expensive roadbook holder where you have to replace the motor. It's just an electric motor or something else. And you're gonna be SOL because they don't make them anymore. So MIGTEC is basically a copy of MD. And um, I mean, it's, it's fantastic. It's, uh, it's completely waterproof, dustproof with this uh, lining on the exterior. Uh, on, the, on the inside, there's a light. All you have to do is connect to your electrical. And uh, yeah, it's got the switch here to go back and forth. This is connected to the lights, so it's not gonna work with the bike off. It only, I have it working only with the bike on. Uh, the next thing, you're gonna need a trip master, okay? That's probably the minimum besides the roadbook that you need. The trip master is an important part because what you're gonna be doing is matching is you're gonna be matching the kilometers shown here with the kilometers shown here. So you're gonna scroll this road book right, you're gonna get the kilometer 0 0.74, and you're gonna know that you're at 0.74 with the Tripmaster. Now, you're gonna see that this tulip, it's called the tulip, it's going over a river, so it's a bridge over a river, right? If you know you're at the river, and uh, you're definitely there, but your Tripmaster says point, 8.9 you're gonna have to scroll it back to 0.74 so that's why you need the remote you need the remote because going up here while you're riding at 50 60 100 kilometers an hour is not an option you need it on the handlebar on your thumb to scroll that guy back actually it works with a battery okay you see how that and it goes in increments of 0.1 you know really really quick so you get get it back down to 0.74 because if you don't if you don't do that your, your error is gonna uh, multiply you know and you're gonna be lost eventually that's the minimum that you need the last piece of hardware I have here is a speedo cap and that's from ERTF French company that specializes in GPS equipment this is not necessarily mandatory um, the reason I got this was to show heading uh, so I have headings on my road book here uh, so you know that's useful to have. What, what this really does is it's a repeater for the last thing really that in navigation terms that you're gonna have, which is, a, uh, which is the GPS provided by the organizer. Now, this GPS isn't for navigating. This is for the organizers to keep track of you. So this is for you uh, basically getting rescued by the organizers in case you get lost in the desert. So you don't actually get the GPS, as you can see, this is empty. This is a bracket that I had uh, for the a new Sport uh, Stella GPS system. What you do is you rent that GPS at the actual race, but in order to get to be ready to install that and go race, you should have the bracket and the wiring, as you can see here, installed ahead of time. Okay. So with the, with the international races, the Rally du Maroc, the Morocco Desert Challenge, Dakar, uh, all of the, the, the Africa Eco Race as well, I believe, all of those uh, uh, use the ERTF GPS equipment. So that's this company. The organizer always has a link to uh, the site with the rally that you're gonna race and the equipment that you need. And basically, the minimum that you're gonna need is the bracket from uh, the uh, GPS provider. So in that case, it'll be ERTF. I don't have that installed right now. That's, in, that's, uh, that's laying around somewhere, but you're gonna install a bracket similar to this on the handlebar. And again, rebelxsports.com provides this nice nifty little metal bracket that you put right onto the handlebar brackets. This provides a base for any kind of mounting of GPS whether it's TomTom Tom Garmin or whether it's a Rally GPS for, um, from the organizers. And then you're gonna have these wires sticking out. So what, what are these? This is basically uh, the GPS antenna. One of these wires here, you know, it's all routed cleanly in through the nav tower up to here. The other one 
This is an RF antenna, so a radio antenna. This is uh, basically a sentinel function and the GPS provided to you by the organizer has a button basically and a warning, uh, audible warning for when you're being passed or you want to pass. So this antenna is for that. It's for to communicate with other bikes or ATVs or cars for the purposes of yelling at you when somebody wants to pass you or when you want to pass them. Um, that's about it. Um, the other thing that you'll have here is a power connection. And yeah, that's, that's over here. Power connection is down there. You know, so three connectors. The ERTF one is also gonna have a satellite antenna, which you stick somewhere as well. Um, but yeah, back to the speedo cap. Um, this is the speedo cap Evo, which is the st which can work by itself because you connect it to the power of the bike, and it has its own GPS chip, and it works actually as a, a trip master. So basically, it's a backup of this in case this breaks. I have this also as a trip master. The remote is here. Um, so basically it's the same function when you're doing trip master when it's just a heading or speed setting um, you know you don't really use this um, so yeah all this stuff is really expensive <laughs> uh, good thing is Rebel X sports sells the MIG tech holder and the ICO for you the ICO trip master uh, this you're gonna to have to get direct from your RTF. You don't need it. Um, even in the uh, international races, you can just rent the GPS, stick it on here, and it'll show you heading. Okay, so you'll have the heading on the handlebar. The only reason you're gonna need that is it's just honestly to be closer to your field of vision when you're riding. This is better to to uh, to, to be near the top where you're looking forward. You know just to see it to see it in front of you instead of looking down um, instead of looking down at the uh, handlebar now the last last thing i want to get into is the electrical because nobody's going to show you this this is the only video blog uh, write-up i know of that talks anything about how to actually wire all this stuff and that is really really i mean that is really the painful part in all of this stuff is because um, yeah, Rade Garage does give you a good beginning. Uh, they give you the uh, extension cable, so you don't have to cut anything on this bike. Do not cut any of the wiring harness on your bike. Whatever it is, do not cut into the wires. Don't don't use this you know this uh, this insulation tape and these how and these household little twisty on wire thing. Don't do that. You have to do this in a way that you're gonna be able to go through you know, rivers, rain, you're gonna be hitting this, this front end on, on hills, on rocks, okay? All the stuff is gonna move around, it's gonna get wet. You need this stuff to be insulated. You need to have factory quality connections. You cannot, you know, go to your gas station and get Bob to do this wiring job for you. You either do it yourself or, or, or somebody does it that has done this before and has raced a rally before because otherwise you're gonna be very disappointed. You're gonna have short circuits. Your stuff is not gonna work. And if this doesn't, this isn't a radio. This isn't something you, isn't, you're not listening to music on this. If it doesn't work, you're not racing. So I can't emphasize that more. You need to have the wiring down pat. Now, maybe um, the Rebel X uh, nav tower, they, they make one as well. That one might have a, mu a few more bells and whistles in regards to, I guess, fuses, connectors that you get to connect this stuff. But personally, I mean, Arade's fairing and nav tower, just look at it. I'm sorry, Manuel, but I like your nav tower. It's, it's fantastic. But the look of this nav tower, the look of this fairing and this windscreen from Arade, this is the KTM factory look. Okay, you got this long headlight here. Um, this tall headlight, it's a tall, you know, aggressive KTM rally, factory rally style windscreen, carbon fiber, I mean, this is just fantastic. 
You also get the extension cable for um, the hot connection. So that's basically, there's a uh, connector in there from the ignition and uh, you just unplug that, the, the stock one, you fit into the extension and you get an extension for your hot, basically direct to battery connection. You also get an extension for the headlight. So basically you, got, you uh, basically just plug it in, you unplug the headlight, the stock headlight, you put in that uh, extension for the headlight and you get an extension for the switched connection. So basically that's only gonna work when the bike is on and the headlights are on so you don't drain your battery in case you leave something on or whatever, or something is short and you start the bike and the battery's dead. This is really easy to take off. This does come with uh, what, are known as, what are known as Zeus clips. Those are quick releases. Um, they're great, but I, I tried them out, I tested them. There's not a lot of vibration damping. So we're talking about plastic to metal contact here. And to me, they just, you know, I heard a lot of vibration. One of them came loose. Maybe I'm not doing it right. I don't know. I use the regular fairing, the rubber fairing nuts and uh, screws. To take this off, it's um, four screws on the nav tower. And you have an option of four or two screws on the fairing. I use uh, four, two on each side. You have to drill those holes. You have to drill into the fairing into your stock fairing. No, that's not a big deal. But yeah, let's show you the nitty gritty internals of this. Nobody else is gonna show you. There you go, and these are little Velcro strips. You can get at the hardware store. This isn't Velcro, this is called 3D uh, Lock from 3M. And it's uh, really hard plastic uh, stuff that you stick onto the bike and to the fairing, and this is just extra protection, extra extra securing, so this doesn't vibrate and these ends are basically secured to the bike. With the fairing and the windscreen off, you get to your carbon tower. This is how uh, you work on all your nav stuff. The, the obviously that that uh, windscreen and fairing comes off pretty easily. And you just take the high beam off with four screws and you get into the nav tower here. And voila, look what we got here. Oh yeah. Just goes on and on. Here's some more. God's sake, why is this guy yelling so much? Anyway, so I'm not gonna go through all this. This is, this is crazy, uh, there's no point in going through this, but a couple things that you have to know. Number one, label your wires, okay? Get some uh, paper tape and a marker. Mark them with what the wires are because when you're at the rally and you have to do something, maybe some, maybe you have to change a fuse, um, you're not gonna wanna follow all these wires back, back to the switches, to the, to the power. Okay, just label the wires uh, ahead of time. You're gonna, you're gonna thank me later. Next, it, some of the equipment that you get will come with fuses, okay? The stuff that doesn't come with fuses, they recommend putting fuses, but they don't actually give you any fuses. So one example I think is, uh, I don't know, one of these here is uh, probably the Ico. Actually, yeah, this one. Um, they recommend having a fuse uh, on your uh, on this wire, but they don't actually give you one. So find a store locally that sells mm. electrical stuff. I'm talking about these uh, connectors here that also Rade supplies. Uh, these uh, you can't see them, but they're basically the gold uh, little uh, ends, male female connectors that go inside there. You get you get a bunch with Rade's kit. Um, but you know, if you're like me and you want to fiddle and tinker and, um, you know, make it, make it your own, get more, uh, find a store. You can get them online, but, uh, personally, I think waiting two, three, five, two weeks, two, three, five days, two weeks is, is, a, is a long time. I like to just go to the store and pick these up. Also, you know, an electrical store that sells these, you, uh, this actually is a Rade um 
kit as well. He gives you these plastic connectors. I got this uh, by myself. You know, this is this is what you need, guys. You cannot, you know, cut these wires all and just twist them together and insulating tape. It's not gonna work. You're gonna need a factory look. So this is this is this is the standard. I mean, I did this myself. I'm not the best. I, obviously, I don't know what I'm doing, but this has worked. Okay, this has worked for me. Um, everything is hidden into the carbon tower so that it's protected from the elements. And uh, yeah. This is, this is, yeah, this is what it is. As you can imagine, I'm quite proud of this job. Um, this is something that if you're just a home, at home mechanic, uh, you know, there's no manual for it. Um, this is kind of all just from YouTube, uh, you know, from uh, from the uh, websites, from online. This is just Google. This is a Google Rally bike. Let's just put it at that. And um, the comments are open on this video. Ask me any questions you have. All the links are posted to all the uh, products here that I had to buy. Uh, other than that, you know, post your comments and questions, and I'll be happy to answer them. Thanks for watching.